Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and this is the first video in the AC electricity series uh, where we're going to introduce AC electricity. So we're going to talk about um, DC versus AC. We'll look at a graph of it and, and why the heck do we have AC in the first place. So here's a simulation uh, on, the, on the FET program that I like to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a battery in here, which is a DC battery, just giving a direct um, current. And you'll see the electrons flow around in one direction. The light and the bulb lights up. Now, the sort of the model we use to describe this um, up until this point, you might have heard that the electrons get all their energy in the bulb, so they sort of go through the, sorry, in the battery, they go through the battery, they collect like buckets of energy, they carry them around the circuit until they get to the bulb, they drop it off, and that's how the bulb goes bright. Right? When I take out um, my battery here and replace it with an AC source, you're going to see something interesting happen. So AC means that the current is alternating. Alternating means back and forth, right? And I want you to carefully watch that the electrons no longer flow through the battery, collect their energy, and go all the way through and through to the bulb. They just go back and forth and back and forth. And look at the ones in the bulb. They don't go very far, and yet the bulb still lights up. So our model that we had of energy of the the battery sort of re-energizing these electrons no longer holds true. And the, what I want you to think about it instead is that, because this can you know, play with people a bit in their heads and they think, well, hang on a second. Are you telling me that the, um, the power station makes the electrical energy, but those electrons never make it to my house, and yet I can turn my lights on and charge my phone and put the dishwasher on? How does that work? How does the energy get to my house? So instead what's happening is that the electric field, the voltage source creates an electric field. Remember, electric fields can move charges. They can move po positive charges or negative charges. They can move electrons, right? And wires guide the electric field around. And so what you actually happen is that as this electric field pushes one way, it squeezes the electrons through this bulb. And then as the electric field turns off and turns the other way, it pulls the electrons back through this bulb. And it's the squeezing and pulling back that generates um, our light. So it's no longer that electrons themselves that are going and recharging and taking the energy, we're now thinking of electricity in terms of an electric field which is pushing and pulling the electrons and that's how the energy is being transferred. So previously when we had DC electricity, um, we had usually a steady current and a steady voltage. right? Now with AC electricity, when you saw it going back and forth and back and forth, we have a sine wave. Right? It goes positive and negative, and it will keep going positive and negative, positive and negative, and positive and negative. And we describe this as sinusoidal. Right? Sinusoidal is the word to describe something that can be um, described by a sine wave effectively. So why the heck do we want it? Because it looks like that bulb was going on and off and on and off. Why do we want electricity that goes forward and backwards in the first place? How can it be useful to us as people? Well, there's two main reasons. The first is it's how we generate our electricity. Right? We generate our electricity by um, having a magnet, magnetic field, and taking a coil of wire, that's what this is, and spinning it inside the magnetic field. So our hydro hydroelectric plants have falling water that spins this coil. Um, our wind turbines have wind which spins this tall coil inside a magnetic field. Even a nuclear power plant in other countries have nuclear um, reactions which release heat, which heat up water, turns to steam, the steam turns a coil of wire inside a magnetic field. And the changing flux through that wire makes positive and negative, and positive and negative. And so you get out of this AC electricity. So the way we generate electricity makes AC. Right? The second reason, which we're going to go into more depth in about two videos, is we can use it for inductors and what are called transformers. So remember Faraday's law we learned about a couple of videos ago was that if we have a changing flux, a flux is a magnetic field through an area, if we change that flux we can generate a voltage, right? And so what we can do is this is a transformer. It has one set of wires. If that wire has AC electricity coming in, back and forth and changing, it makes a magnetic field. And that magnetic field sort of guided around this transformer here. But that magnetic field's changing because the AC electricity is changing, right? So you have a changing magnetic field through the secondary coil, that changing magnetic field induces a voltage, and so you get a voltage out the secondary coil. Now instead of just being a, a party trick, the real advantage of this is when you have different amounts of coils, so there's like four 
times it's been wrapped around here. It looks like it's been wrapped around about eight times on this side. That can step the voltage up or it can step the voltage down. So it can go from 10 volts to 20 volts or back down from 20 to 10. And that ends up being very useful, which we'll go into that in further detail in a couple of videos. The issue of, well, is it a, is it a problem because our, our lights are flickering, like in the simulation of the electricity going back and forth, back and forth? Well, our electricity in New Zealand um, is on, a, on an AC frequency of 50 hertz, so it goes back and forth 50 times a second. Our eyes sort of only refresh about 20 or 30 times a second, so we don't notice it. We don't notice the lights flickering. Now, a lot of our components and parts of our houses want DC, so the computer I'm recording this on, for example, wants um, our its electricity to be in DC, so we've got to convert it back. But in terms of generating electricity and also using these things called transformers to trans, um, transmit our electricity, AC electricity at the moment is um, far more useful. So in summary, AC electricity is sinusoidal. It goes back and forth and back and forth. And the reason we have it is it's because how we generate electricity in the first place. And it's very useful in these things called transformers, which you're going to learn about in an upcoming video.